Ohio, good morning world. Oh, sorry. You know, it would really suck to have it like a good, you know, three ton tree fall on you. It would. You, you pretty much, the only thing that could save you is if like you were like cut out in a trench, like in the dirt. It's pretty much what she was, it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> which, uh... <clears throat> which, you know, if it didn't really crush her and kill her or anything, just kind of pinned her down a little bit, I think I could wiggle my way out of there. Or just dig myself out. Yeah, this uh, this is effectively what I imagine it would be. Right here. Sorry, that's your lap. Yeah. This is effectively what I imagine it would be. Oh, you hell know. no. Everybody remember this? <laughs> He's dead. Does everybody remember this? I've never seen this before. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that man dead as hell. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. They did oh, yeah, it as I a know, joke. Not. I know it's not because the camera angles, but man, that shit Yeah, they did that as a joke. But it's called DRT still... dead right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's not just DOA. That's super DOA. Uh, death, he dead. He dead. DOS dead on the scene. God. D DFT dead from tree. De death from tree. Death oh, from timber. Actually, timber related death. TRD. May maybe I shouldn't joke about that because I actually had a family member get crushed by a tree limb. Uh, he was he was an old man. He was like seventy seven years old. He was out walking in the woods like he always did. Had his cane with him and everything. And he was out there just like chewing tobacco and just walking through the woods. And then all of a sudden he heard a snap uh, from what, you know, what can I, I can imagine there. He heard a snap in the woods, looked up, tree limb fell right down on top of him and broke his, uh, uh, broke his pelvis. And then he, uh, died from infection. Damn. And, um, he was, he was a tough old bastard, but you know, he was, you know, <laughs> mother nature's a cruel bitch. Yep. In more ways than falling tree. Mm-hmm. But speaking of cruel bitches, uh, Sukasa uh, did this to Kohaku, but thankfully uh, Senku saved uh, saved her. And uh, let's see uh, let's see how this progresses. Is this is this gonna be boy meets girl, girl falls in love, or or or? I have a feeling he is too focused on science to give two shits about. I it. think that's <laughs> the that same case too. too. I think he could give literally no shits about relationships. He's like, I'll save you, but I. Ain't. I ain't worried about banging right now. We've just met and you're already professing your love. Not how to handle an emergency. I didn't say anything about falling in love. I'm saying I like you as a person and I think the two of us can work together. A professional working relationship. I'm cool with that. And I was right. <laughs> Always on guard, I guess. species of hominid that sleeps with a weapon or something? Makes it obvious I don't have love on the brain. It's all fun and games, so you fall asleep and stab yourself in the leg. Lioness! I am a person with feelings! I'm afraid I might accidentally end up killing you! If you just go to sleep, there won't be any accidents. I'm not too keen on the idea of dying twice in one day. So you're looking for allies, are you? Well, then why don't you come along with me? So you've got some more lion buddies. They're a whole pride of you somewhere? That's right. I'm sure they would be great allies for the battle. Easier said than done. He's kind of a wimp when it comes to the, like, physical stuff. Where two million years have Hot gone. spring water. Yeah. I'm taking it back home for a bath. Why do you need to take a healing bath when you're obviously, like, 10 billion percent healthy? <laughs> the thought of an overpowered lion girl like you running around is kind of terrifying. I am not a lion! And for your information, it's for my sister! <laughs> In case you've forgotten, you had a tree fall on you yesterday. So hand it over. Thanks, <laughs> Am I the only one in this stone world who's not practically a gorilla? Okay, I actually prefer lioness to that. That's not <laughs> the point here. <clears throat> <laughs> Whoa, how in the heck did you build such a useful thing so quickly? Turn right up here. We missed the turn! <laughs> No. Look, Senku, check it out. Oh, no. no. How many people live here? Well, not counting the kids and retirees, <laughs> there are 40 of us, all working together. Kohaku and the others don't appear to have any knowledge of modern technology. So 
I'll bet that means they're descendants of people who revived a long time ago. Where did all these people come from? Whoa! People from outside the village hmm. aren't welcome. Because they're all criminals who were banished by the chief. Therefore, we cannot let him cross this bridge. Even if he saved your life. We'll just have to battle it out right here and now. But it's really not fair. There's two of you and one of me. Should put me at a major disadvantage. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> 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 wow. That's their level, eh? <laughs> They're like a bunch of confused yeah. gorillas. Well, Look at them. Be no problem at all. There's no other choice. Special technique. Let someone else handle it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Quit freaking out, Ginro. Hey, I'm the one called Chrome. Bad and insanely smart. I'm the genius sorcerer of the village. Chrome. Sorcerer. So possibly a dude with a very oh, light knowledge of like science. Potentially. Because you, you got to remember, in the early days, so sorcery was considered science. You know, you were able to craft things that weren't, that, you know, people weren't expecting. And a lot of people Sen logically didn't know how to... ancient alchemy. Yeah, effectively. Because you're combining things to make something new. You're effectively, you're effectively, uh, you know, I heard, you know, someone once said, sorcery is just bad science, which <laughs> is one part true, but also one part untrue, because um, in the beginning, it depends on the perspective, because if it's the person creating it, then it's science, but if it's the person witnessing it, then it can be sorcery, because they lack the understanding, that's that's my that's my logic on the whole thing, but this dude here, Chrome, I'm not sure what to, like, what his knowledge is or anything like that. I guess we're gonna find out. But know this, I'm not backing down, cause sorcery is my specialty. So step off and let me handle this guy. Ready for some badass sorcery? Check out my rainbow bridge! I am the master of the flames and fire! Ah! He did it! He made the fire turn yellow! But now it's purple! Hmm. Wow! It's crazy! Yeah, he has more than a small knowledge of science in that case. Rainbow bridge? What total crap. Did no. you use some blue crystals? Maybe you found them in the caves? is definitely not just completely made up of little tricks and cheap crap like that. Uh. Anything. Oh, you wait and see. <laughs> I one of my instruments of sorcery that will put the hurt on you for sure. <laughs> no, that hurts. What the hell did you do? Static me? electricity. <laughs> <laughs> but rubbing it with leather instead of your hands will make 10 billion times more power. I'll use my science flag. <laughs> yes! The guy's hair is all spiky! It was already pretty spiky. How does that work? Oh! Hey, oh. Back, right? <laughs> Check it out, Sukasa. You can try all you want to kill science itself. There'll always be some idiot who will try anything just to see what happens. Exactly. Eventually, the shiny monkeys will create a technological civilization. They always do. It's it's inevitable. And the only way for you to survive is if you join our kingdom of science. <laughs> I would love if you joined forces with us and lent your shed of science to the cause. Hey, you're not taking my stuff, okay? I challenge you to one last battle. Just you and me. If you lose, you'll leave the village after you bow to me. If you win, take everything in the shed and I'll work for you. Fight me in a battle of numbers. <laughs> oh, destroyed. Oh, <laughs>
<laughs> I salute thee. Super excited about this. <laughs> I love how I just oh, showed the battle. I, like, to to I challenge you to arithmetic. <laughs> oh, this gonna be good. Wham, wham. <laughs> just, just destroyed. Kicked my butt. I, well, only because I was off my game. Chrome, no sense in, no sense in denying it happened. Just a bunch of stupid rocks. You think that? Calcanthite and Corundum even have Cinnabar in here. I hope you have fun showing off the most boring trophies ever. I gotta bring this hot spring water up to my sister. Is it really still hot at that point? She'll think it's a lot cooler when she sees some of the shit they're gonna do with it. Oh yeah. Do as you like outside the village, but take one step on this bridge and I'll cut you down. The Fair enough. Are the rules. Wait a second. You'd better not inhale the smoke. You'll die. Ha! <laughs> the shiny golden spear is pretty awesome, isn't it? Kenro, the that man with the golden said, spear. I think I'll just keep it like it is now. He's monster, gotta admit that's the coolest thing he's got all year. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guarantee he's like, rules are rules. But this spear, though, <laughs> this is pretty good. badass. It looks shiny. It's like, I think I'll keep it this way. Sir, <laughs> Hunter? Jasper, Turquoise, do you mind giving us a moment, please? I'd like to speak to Kohaku in private. It's funny, they're just straight up named Jasper and Turquoise, whereas she's named Amber in Japanese. You dummy, Kohaku! Something must have happened to you that caused your hair to come undone. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I don't wonder what's wrong with her. Left. Don't risk oh. your life for me. Tuberculosis? Or Hopefully it's like something like untreated. Whether it's called sorcery or science, can we save her? I think it's time I told you everything about what happened 3,700 years ago and about what the world was like before the collapse. Oh. So he's, he's telling him everything that was... Wow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> like, what? The thing in the sky? You went there? Well, not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, guess I need to see yeah, that face. Like, not me, awesome. but people. Yes. It's like, wait a minute. People actually flew through the sky like birds? Yes. You mean you've been to the giant white rock in the sky? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You, wait, you mean the moon? Moon? That's what it's called? Yeah, the moon. Oh my god, I'm learning so much! <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody took a big old dump all over it. <coughs> I think Why he's realizing just how far humanity's fallen. You to get emotional. I'm not crying! God damn it, I am crying! Who turned everyone to stone? If I find out, I'll kill whoever it was! One that was full of science and technology and life! It all just got wiped out in a flash? How in the hell could that not piss me off? Humanity isn't going down that easy. We've got two million years of human history as close as it could be. Right here inside my head. Senku! I'm gonna build this kingdom of science with you. And we're gonna fight whatever it is that's making Ruri sick. Nice! So tell me, are you really up for it? Yeah, we're gonna use science. To make the ultimate medicine, you and I will make antibiotics. No oh, shit. Well, so, you yeah. gotta think. That wasn't That's not the... that hard to make, actually. No, no. Like penicillin's a relatively easy thing to make. Yeah, it's but it wasn't mold. until Fucking the 21st like century where mold. we actually invented it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you just gotta find. You just gotta <laughs> know the proper way to cultivate it and synthesize it into being a a drug instead of a mold, and. It's, it's, it's just, possible. That's the thing is he still doesn't know like that she's sick with like a bio, like you know a uh, you know a microorganism like, like call sickness basically. Yeah, well, yeah, really if it's she, like a bacteria, she could have straight up lung cancer or something. Or tuberculos tuberculosis is one that scares me because yeah. that's one like in the old world could be a viral infection. Yeah, could, be, There's could a just be a genetic defect in her lungs. Like who knows? Yeah. In which Unless that, she used to not be sick, <clears throat> and you told her that detail at least, and then she just I, got sick. All the time. I don't think they did say that. I, it's that's just, she's I been sick for a year. Even then, you can you can actually develop genetic sicknesses later in your life. They cannot manifest until like you know your thirties, forties, or whatever. Just depends yeah. on what it is. Well, it's just like me. I've developed one. Uh, it's not very severe, but it's 
uh, right there uh, to skin disease, uh, Tinea versicola. I never heard of that. Uh, it's it's an offshoot of sickle cell anemia, but instead of it uh, having very severe health effects, instead it causes uh, skin discoloration along the elbow joints, on the inner elbow joints, and on the chest and the neck. Hmm. It's and it it's very it's very prominent in people who have melungeon DNA, which which I've got. Got it on both sides, actually. My mom and my and my mom and my dad both both got it. But yeah, See, I thought I did because uh, there was a myth about something that I have. Uh, but it, the I, bump. Yeah, with melungeon knot. Yeah, like, the, I have the little bump on the back of my head, and it's apparently a myth that has nothing to do with genetics. Well, it's actually uh, the melungeon knot. Uh, it's actually considered a an extension of the atlas vertebrae which they say is an unnatural mutation that Melungeons predominantly had. However, over time, you know, they've had more genetic discoveries to find that the Melungeons actually are from several different places. There's one theory, which Brent Kennedy found out. Uh, he actually did some uh, testing, and he found out that a lot of, uh, a lot of Melungeon DNA actually comes from Turkey. It's actually, it's actually uh, you know, a lot of uh, Christian conscripts who lived in the Byzantine Empire, fled, and uh, a lot of them went throughout Europe and came to the New World. And that's and that's pretty much what happened. And then there's also uh, then there's also the one that states that it's like the lost like one of the lost tribes, uh, lost Native American tribes. Uh, for instance, uh, I think it's Oak Island. Uh, the entire population overnight just disappeared like that. No one knows where they went. A lot of people say that the Oak Island natives were actually the uh, the Melungeons. And then, of course, there's the other thing. It's just like, oh, it's just a triracial sociolate within the Appalachian Mountains, a mix of, uh, a mix of <coughs> former slaves, I- Scotch-Irish settlers, and uh, Native Americans in the area. That's what they say. Although, no one really 100% knows. Those are the three prevailing theories, and no one really knows 100% what to make of it. But I don't really much, like, base myself off of it or anything like that. I just consider myself a multigrain cracker. That's that's pretty much it. A multigrain cracker? Yeah. Uh, someone called me that a long time ago, <laughs> and, I, and I've used it ever since. I mean, I, he tried to use it as an insult, and I use it as a term of endearment. He's he's like <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! You a multi grain cracker, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I am, because you know multigrain. I'm yeah I I've I've had my DNA test done and I'm like 23 percent native and then the rest of me is like I'm over 60 percent white and then the rest of me is like filled in with uh, uh I'm actually surprised seven percent black which was just like damn that's awesome, and then uh two percent uh two percent Tongan. I was surprised Tongan. by that too. Like Pacific Islander. I'm like, how in the hell would Pacific Islander come to this area? <laughs> Who knows? Who the hell knows? I mean, that's all just all over the place. That's just how the chips fell in my favor. Um, but I'm wondering how the uh, I'm wondering how long ago the people have been awake. Like how many generations of humanity have moved forward? to where uh, Kohaku's village is right now. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering, no idea. too. They don't seem to be familiar with the previous world, so... Not Said again, all. they're raising, like, a lot of questions that it's, like, that almost seems impossible to answer, and I wish they wouldn't raise questions like that, but, like, at the same time, like, from what I've heard, they do end up actually answering most of your questions. Like, uh, you, yeah, when you talk to Matt. they don't seem like normally they would be impossible to answer. Yeah, when you talk to, to yeah. Matt about it. By the way, the thing he was talking about was like, didn't you wonder how he got in that cave to start with? Mm. And I was like, oh, come to think of it, yeah, I guess. And, and, like, you yep. think, and so. it was shown like two epi- uh, last episode, mm-hmm. actually. So, yeah, now it seems as though Senku's off to the races because he's got himself a uh, very a very passionate apprentice with uh, Chrome. And also, he seems to be winning over some of the villagers very slowly. For instance, uh, Kinro with the golden spear. He's like, rules are rules, and you're not allowed in. I he's made a definitely gold- won over the sorcerer kids, so that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yep. He won over Chrome. Hey, uh, Kohaku and Chrome are already on his side. Uh, Kinro, I think... Well, Chrome wasn't at first. He had to... Oh, no. He had to put Chrome in his place. Prove to him, yeah. 
Uh, he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> of course. Chrome, Chrome. well, I think Chrome could flex nuts because that's pretty much what, he was pretty much the only one who knew about stuff like that, and people, uh, he, it, it's, we fear what we don't understand. Something and else a, I'm wondering about this, too, is uh, you said, like, you did find out that he is the main character, technically. Yeah. Whereas, like, the show opened, making it look like the other kid was going to be the main character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, With Taiju. I'm wondering if he sent them on this mission, and we straight up aren't even going to see them for several episodes. Oh, damn. And, like, the next time we'll see them is actually when he goes to meet back up with them. Damn. Hmm. Maybe. So if it keeps following him as the main character in this uh, part of the stuff that's going on. <clears throat> a lot well, of anime will do you, like, back and forth between people who have split up, though. But yeah. I also feel like, to an extent, that can slow down story. Like, because <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that happens down. with Naruto a lot, is there are multiple groups in different places split up doing different things. Yeah. And something really interesting has happened in one spot, but they keep going back to show you what's happening in this other spot, and you're just like, oh, fuck, come on, man. <laughs> like, yep. That's why I like this uh, new season better because they've they've had like a tighter focus on mo- like one thing at a time. It seems like, yeah. Um, and honestly, that's that's one complaint that I've had with certain like certain anime is that you know they they have gone back and forth too much between plot lines. It's, it's the a- same reason that you never let your party split up in D anD. d You can, but in my opinion, it instantly becomes less fun for all of your players if you allow your party to split up. Because this group has to have their attention given to them, and this group has to have their attention given to them. And while they're taking their turns, nothing is happening for these other people so just sitting here twiddling their thumbs at the table. So, yep. like, that's why if if anyone ever tries to split up in d and I usually come up with some sort of, like, trickery to just, like, loop them right back around and put them back together. Yeah. You know, just be like, oh, we're going to go left path with this group, and this group's going to take the right path. All right. Uh, the group on the left path gets halfway down the hallway when all of a sudden the hallway is collapsed in front of them and they have to loop back and meet up with the other guys and something like that. If they try uh, to break through, then I'll make them like fall through a fucking trap door <coughs> and go down a slide and end up in a room that the other guys take some stairs down to, shit like that. And they have and to like, set them free. I, I'm giving you the illusion of choice, but I, I'm not ever allowing you to split the party in half because that e- fucks the game up for everybody. Yeah, it does. Um, which... The, the I think the reason why it will work in this is because I think where Senku Senku is the main character, thankfully. I mean, I like Taiju and I like how how brutally honest he is about how he feels about Oruziha, but he's an entertaining character. He 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 is, but Senku is infinitely more entertaining because of just how interesting As long as he it is. only does shortcuts to whatever they're doing. Like, yeah, that'll be better. Like I want to, I want the focus to stay on the science aspect of it because that's the entertaining ass part of this. So. Oh yeah, like and... how he's got coming up with plans to get stuff done because <laughs> all they're doing is going over there and just kind of hanging out, seeing what he's doing, and they can do shortcuts to be like, all right, so he's made the revival fluid now. And yeah, he's starting to revive some more people. They can have a shortcut to for if they want to for them talking their way into actually letting him hang out, letting. Him letting them hang out with him, you know. Or and um, then, but like, also, keep the focus on the science part. And also, the plans, we can also see opinion. potential secondary antagonists be born as well. Like yeah. he brings them back, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, ooh, what's this guy's deal? Like, what's his ordeal? You mean what? I mean, is he like, is he like just as strong as Sukasa, or is he, uh, you know, or is he this that? Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? But I'm still excited. I'm still very excited to see how this show's going to go. I mean, like, they, they could have the uh, antithesis of him, essentially, in terms of, like, what a lot of people think about science, which is he could bring back a kid that is, like, super religious, and he's just like, science has always been against God, basically, and we need to keep it as pure as possible. So you could have, like, that yeah, creepy, that whole... skinny preacher kid, basically, trying to be, like, uh, you know, like, our religion that we're doing yeah, is I'm, the way I'm betting to go. we'll have that episode... It'll probably have a whole episode dedicated to that. Could well, be. yeah, like the religious. Time, well, they, well, you know? that's that's sort of become a stereotype now. Yeah, at yeah, which, yeah I know. Which, which is Stephen King? Which Stephen King played that one out to death. I remember, I remember the one in Maximum Overdrive. I'm like, yeah. all right, counting the seconds till this guy's dead, and three, two, one, and he's dead. 
It's like, you know that person's going to die. Just like the person... The bitch in the mist. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I, I was... No, I was... No, religious fanaticism, you know, that needs to be dialed in because my... You see, I have my religion, but that doesn't mean I need to lord over everybody else and make everyone else feel inferior simply because I believe something different. Uh, look, I've always lived under the impression that science and, science and you know, the divine... Like... The divine is something is shit we don't understand fully, whereas the where science is the building blocks to understanding more and more and more. Do I think we'll understand it in my lifetime to where all the questions are answered? Hell no, because whenever you answer one question, a hundred more questions come up. That's just the wonders of science. That's just how it goes. Now, I don't I don't pretend that you know I don't pretend that what I believe is superior to everyone else. I mean. You know, Jake's an atheist, and he's and you know he has what he believes in everything, and I don't, I don't, and I, I love science. I've loved science ever since, ever since my uh, my dad bought me a little science kit way back in the day. Uh, he bought it, he bought it for me, and uh, I, I was just like intrigued to do everything in it. And even after I did everything in it, I was looking for new stuff to do. I was like, I was like, ooh, what's this here? Like, Get can excited. I do something with it? Like, always tinkering and always doing stuff like that. And my See, pastor trying was always... To set, uh, trying to separate science from religion is as primitive as, like, the witch trials and shit, so... That, there's yeah. There's nothing wrong with liking science like that and being religious, too. Nope. And, like, a lot of religious people try to be like, oh, well, you can't take science into account with your religion. And it's like, no, dude, like, the... The whole you thing is, if, them in the lab if something time. made everything that exists, they made it with a set constant of rules. That set constant of rules is science. Yes, and you and people want to make the argument that, like, I think science and religion can coexist. Carl Sagan believed it could to a certain degree. Neil deGrasse Tyson, in certain ways, believes it can. Elon Musk doesn't. Elon Musk is unsure because you know he's you know. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, Elon Musk, first off, isn't a like a full blown scientist. He's he's an inventor, and a uh, and he's also a uh, designer. He's not a uh, he's not like he's not like an astrophysicist uh, like Michio Kaku or uh, friggin' Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's an astronomical engineer, though. Well, yeah, he. <laughs> well, he's, he's no, he he's an engineer. Spacecraft. He's an engineer. Yeah, but you see, so's Bill Nye. Yeah, and. Bill Nye, I mean, he's like he's a very smart person. He worked for Boeing, but at the same time, it's just like you know, debating astrophysics and debating you know, I'm I'm gonna look at what Neil deGrasse Tyson has to say, and I'm also gonna look at what Michio Kaku has to say because Michio Kaku, I mean, the dude has has done so much studies on the human brain, it's actually crazy. Yeah, I, I read that book a couple years back, yeah. um, Future of the Mind. Yeah, it's brilliant stuff. <clears throat> it is. It, it really is brilliant stuff. And to see how far the the human brain and also artificial intelligence may go. The artificial intelligence part scares me. There's actually a uh, book out uh, that if you uh, are interested in reading it, Nick, or uh, interested in reading it, about either of you, Nick, Nick or uh, Jacob, uh, it's, I don't uh, really it's called... I read books much anymore. I just don't okay. have the time for it. Uh, well, that's fair. Uh, with, it's a, called, with ADD making your brain have to loop back and read the same sentence six times to actually absorb the information, it enough, takes a enough. lot of time for me to read. Well, okay. Well, Jake, if you're interested, it's called Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom. And it is, it puts a huge, huge, like, like pin in, in artificial intelligence and the benefits of it. It's just like, ooh, that's kind of scary shit. And it draws a lot of logical points. I saw a thing the other day. It's like, why don't we just program all of our artificial intelligence? It's like, if question arises, become evil, then don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, but you see, even fail safes, even fail safes, artificial intelligences, especially if they have quantum computing in their in their synapse in their like uh, like temporal synapses, they could figure ways around logic ways around the don'ts that we put in front of them. It's just like the uh, don'ts that are put on society that people do anyway. Like, for instance, why do why do we enjoy smoking cannabis? Hmm. THC receptors. Exactly. And even though society tells us it's no... It's tricking our own brain is what it's doing. 
I don't well, really enjoy smoking it, but that's just me. Well, okay, nicotine. Same thing with nicotine. What if they outlawed nicotine and they said, oh, you're not allowed to enjoy nicotine anymore? Then I would have horrible withdrawals and feel like ass all day. Yep, me too. Yeah, and yet you do it because you want to. Because I like it. Exactly. I don't really want to anymore. No, I mostly do it because I'm chemically addicted to it and habitually addicted to it. Uh, I do it because I'm addicted to it and I like it. <laughs> I don't really like it anymore. I'm gotten fucking sick of it, and I wish it was easier to quit than it was. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I feel like that sometimes, and then sometimes I'm like, I'm glad I got this motherfucker. If not, I'll be bored as shit. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> we're going to move on from here, everybody. This was uh, Dr. Stone, Episode 7. Uh, good episode. Good episode. I mean, you know, we got introduced to the village. We got introduced to uh, Kenro and Genro. We also got introduced to Chrome. And, uh, yeah. Seems as though uh, Senku is on his way to creating his kingdom of science. So, I guess until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And I'm Jacob. And we will see you all in the next one. Peace out.